Chisels come in a lot of different shapes and sizes, you don't need every single one, but we're gonna go over them so that you can choose the ones that you need for the kind of work that you wanna do. Bench chisels are the Swiss army knife of chisels, and they can really do most of the jobs that we need chisels to do pretty well. This is a fancier bench chisel, but it's the exact same use there. This is called a paring chisel. Paring chisels have generally longer blades, they're thinner, and they have longer handles. Paring chisels are meant to be only used with body power. So we're going to lean into and press down upon, but really nothing much more than that. This is not gonna be hit with a hammer. This is called a mortise chisel, and this is just like its name says, meant for making mortises, cutting holes in wood. You'll notice that this mortise chisel is much fatter than this paring chisel. That is because this is meant to pry wood and to really be reamed on with a mallet or a hammer. Generally speaking, we want two sizes of bench chisels and one mortise chisel. However, a lot of bench chisels are fat enough that we can kind of get away with using them to cut our mortises for quite a while before we end up having to invest in a mortise chisel. So what sizes do you actually need? If you live in America and you're going to get a lot of your wood from your local home center, you're going to want basically two standard sizes, a three quarter inch chisel and a one quarter inch chisel. The reason for that is that when we are going to join two pieces of wood together, with things like mortise and tenons or dado joints, a good rule of thumb is that we want the adjoining piece to be one third the thickness of the main case piece. So if we were to get one chisel that's the same width as this piece of wood, so that would be the three quarter inch chisel, and then one chisel that was the same width as this piece of wood, so that would be the quarter inch chisel, then we would have the toolkit that we need to join these pieces of wood together. Sometimes it's really helpful though to have a bigger chisel that you can kind of wail on and remove tons and tons of wood with. And a wider chisel like this, which is an inch and a half, is really helpful, but again, not necessary at the outset. I have a whole other video on the sharpening process. Make sure you go check that out. Here is a quick brief on tool steels. When we're talking about steels, you're gonna hear stuff that sounds a lot like different codes. A2, O1, PMV11. All of those are fancy ways of talking about the hardness and the durability of the blade. O1 tool steel is what most companies have used for a very long time. It is a pretty good steel that's soft enough to sharpen easily, but it doesn't carry an edge for a super long time. A2 tool steel is a little bit harder than O1 tool steel, but it is also a little bit more difficult to sharpen. That difficulty in sharpening pays off in a longer wearing edge. PMV11 is a tool steel that Lee Valley Tools recently came up with that is a happy medium between A2 and O1 steel. It's soft and easy to sharpen, but it has incredible durability. Socket versus Tang chisels, and Western versus Japanese chisels. A quick word on Japanese chisels as opposed to Western chisels. Japanese chisels are a fine option. They're great, especially when being used with a hammer. Japanese chisels often come in metric increments, but if you wanna use the US way of measuring things, I would say stick with Western tools because then your chisels are gonna come in the same dimensions that your wood is. This is what's called a tang chisel, and this is a socket chisel. This one has a little point that goes into the handle of the wood, and this one has a wooden piece that goes into the socket of the chisel. I prefer to use socket chisels over tang chisels because if we're gonna beat on a tang chisel with a hammer a lot, we have a very high likelihood of driving that wedge further into the handle and splitting that handle apart. Whereas with a socket chisel, any beating that we do is actually just going to put that wood tenon deeper into the socket of the chisel and that socket is actually going to squeeze those wood fibers together more which will make it ultimately stronger in the end. Not all hand tools are created equal. Ultimately you're going to have to pick the ones that are within your budget and will do the work that you want. But the good news is you don't have to have a shop full of tools and you certainly don't have to have the most expensive ones. In fact, 
I just went to the home store and bought an entire working set of tools for under $150 that will get me where I need to go with hand tool woodworking just fine. Check out the whole list on my Squarespace blog, anofalltrades.com. I've been blogging on Squarespace for the last eight years, which means there is a lot of material there that can help you on your woodworking journey. Learn how to cut dovetails, how to use a handsaw properly, how to restore antique tools and give them new life. Squarespace is a fantastic platform for people like me who are not super tech savvy to be able to easily drag and drop whatever I wanna put out there in the world and share it through a beautiful artist design template. If you're interested in starting your own website, go to squarespace.com. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash trades for a 10% discount. At its most basic, a chisel is a tool that's going to shape wood. They started getting used 8,000 years ago, and they've been a craftsman favorite ever since. Chisels can take the corners off of wood and make it look a little bit nicer. They can also join two pieces of wood together in a dado or dovetails or a mortise and tenon joint that will give us the opportunity to exploit the way that a tree grows and the strength that is kind of naturally inherent in wood, making the strongest possible joint that can be made with two pieces of wood. A really important note we need to make is on safety. A chisel is the most dangerous tool and more ER visits happen because of chisel accidents than any other tool in woodworking, including the table saw. My friend Chris Schwartz always says that we want to treat a chisel like a gun. We never wanna have any of our body parts or anyone else on the other side of the business end of a chisel. So we are going to get in a regular practice of making sure that all of our soft bits are on this side of the cutting edge. One of the most dangerous things that I see all the time is people trying to adjust a piece of wood while they have, you know, literally no control over the tool or no built-in stops and their fingers or their hands are really close. In fact, my brother-in-law almost cut off his thumb because he knocked his chisel off his bench, went to grab for it and accidentally caught it like that. And I don't need to go into any more detail, but we do need to take safety and chisels very serious. Now that your chisel's ready to go, it is time to learn how to cut dovetails. I'll see you in that video. Cheers.